Hi everyone, welcome. What you see here is a little diagram that I created of this worm bin that you see out here on the bench. This um, diagram is meant to show the bin. You can even see the word label here is representing this little label that's barely even visible anymore, but it's just to help me orient the, um, the system. But it's also the label on which we've got the description of the types of worms that occupy the system as well as the launch date of the system. So this system has a little bit of an enhanced record keeping system going on here, far beyond what I normally maintain for my normal systems. Here we're maintaining not only the age, estimated worm count, and quantity or number of feedings fed, 13 so far. Today's going to be feeding number 14, but we're also maintaining um, a document that shows the interval that went between each feeding and even here, right down to the level of detail showing what was fed at each feeding. So the last feeding in here, which was 12 days ago, was feeding number 13. That was the first feeding, following many, where we deviated from the plan of trying to put in foods that would take a long time. So we put in potato peels, strawberry, cucumber, things that we believed would go pretty quickly. And we'll check in to see how that last feeding from 12 days ago went. And then we'll get over onto the side that we're going to feed over on this side. Let's go ahead and start excavating. This is the um, diagram from last time, and uh, not much difference. We'll use the newest one as a top covering in the end, and we'll go ahead and we'll use the old one here to um, supplement the bedding down in the feeding zone. The feeding zone will be on this side, but the last time we fed, it was over on this side to indicate where we last fed. So why don't we move aside the feeding zone indicator so we can get in here to see how the potato peels, strawberry and cucumber are coming along. Besides worms you can see a good number of uh, springtails also occupy the system. Lots and lots of springtails in here. So you can see over here on the diagram last time too I had anticipated that I'd be feeding them pineapple but I got that wrong and I came in with a different cuisine. This time I definitely um, did match what I've written onto the document here. It's banana peels, bread, and coffee. Bread is something I don't really feed that often, but this particular loaf of bread started showing signs of mold. So I figured, you know what, we're going to give it to the worms. I got a couple banana peels for them over here. But um, let's see, why don't we dig in and see how they're doing. I, I would have to assume that the stuff given to them last time will for the most part be gone but some of the other things that were placed in here from feedings gone by such as the Brussels, Brussels sprout stems that are now 36 days in progress that's over five weeks now this is one of them and man they've really done a number on this thing last week we hinted at perhaps taking one of those because there's more than one in here we we hinted at possibly checking one of them out a little bit more closely by maybe taking it apart and sort of breaking into it to see how things look inside of it. Man, look at this one. This one actually still has signs of a little bit of green on there. But, um, you know, let's get these things out of the way. But this thing is almost completely hollowed out. It's got nothing remaining on the inside. So why don't we use this one as the one to kind of open up and explore. I've got these things going on in a couple of my other worm bins. And I don't remember from the last check-ins, last couple check-ins, smelling anything from this stuff, but now I'm definitely starting to smell it. In the other systems where we fed this stuff too, it was pretty stinky. It's interesting how there's this kind of gel. I don't know if it's gel, but it's like a jelly-ish <laughs> consistency inner core. In another of my systems, I kind of squeezed the entire thing and that, that goop came sliding out of the sides. But I think we'll leave this one since it's a little bit more intact. We'll leave that one be now that we've already satisfied our curiosity on what it looks like inside one of these things to open it up. But I don't recall what else was in here. Oh, here's another pumpkin stem. Um, so right, really quick, pumpkin stem, one of them is 106 days of age at this point, the other one is only 59 days of age at this point. It's hard to say which is which. Perhaps if one of them gives a little bit, it'll be the older one that's over 100 days of age at this point. There's also um, 
been some signs remaining of the feeding that you see here. Not the veggie mix or the banana. Well, I think we did actually see some banana peel, but I think we saw the pepper stem last time. Oh, here it is. So we're not going to strike that feeding off yet because some remains of it still exist. I've just been scratching off the, um, the feeding once we find no traces of it any longer in the worm bin. Ooh, lots of worms down here at the bottom. These, so this system has um, undergone a little bit of a um, dry bedding treatment to see if we can try to reduce the moisture content in here. So on numerous occasions, um, we came in here with just dry bedding to see if the dry bedding might be able to soak up some of the, what seemed to be excess moisture in here. And as of last week, we decided it was no longer necessary to do that because even though there's a good moisture content in here, it no longer really seemed to me like it was excessive. So I, um, I do like to kind of try to maintain a balance. Don't want to let it get too dry, but also don't want to let it um, become overly damp and muddy either. So I like that middle ground where the material is nice and damp and comfortable for the worms, but not so nasty that it's going to get all muddy and stuff. So besides that, besides that pepper stem I think there was also something else banana I think I do remember seeing little bits of banana peel last time but they were really far gone already so it wouldn't be surprising if we saw no more traces of that the um the potato peel that we fed last time is still showing up here in little bits and pieces it's just the very skin anymore so any actual potato that was adhering to that potato skin um, has already been nibbled off by the worms over the past 12 days since it was placed in here. And they'll work down the actual skin itself too, gradually, but the soft, starchy potato that's stuck to the peel is what they go for first because it's softer and easier to eat. And then the very um, thin outer peel of the potato eventually goes too. I bet you this right here is a fragment of the stem of one of the banana peels that we went hunting for. So technically we still even have a little bit of banana peel stem remaining in here. I don't know what else that could be. That's just my guess as to what that probably is. So let's, um, let's make our way over to the side that we're going to be feeding now. Now it's been, let's just really quickly come back in here one more time. So... 12 day interval since the last time we checked in um, when we fed the strawberries, cucumber, I saw no cucumber or strawberry, but the potato peels still remain. Then there was, um, well, it's kind of nice, you know, it always shows right there the number. 26 days since we last fed on the side that we're going to be feeding today. There was a gourd put in here, avocados, pits and stuff like that, so, and banana. So the gourd, if you're not familiar, is one of these crazy looking pumpkin-y things that are put out around Halloween time as decoration. And that's the sort of thing I definitely expect to continue bumping into in here over time, unless we help it along. And we might eventually get to the point where we, you know, deviate from the whole idea of not interfering with the breakdown process and just kind of help things along. But in most cases, I'll tend to not help the materials break down and just leave them be. But even with these, um, the pits out of the avocados, I think we found like four or five of them last time. And we even tried breaking a couple of them, but they just wouldn't give yet last time. But it was so close. And it's not too surprising that on this occasion, we're actually able to chip away at one of them. And this avocado, you can see they're even kind of working their way through it. I kind of broke that outer shell a little bit, trying to get a better look at what's going on there. And here, I was very tempted to at least provide them with access to the inside of this thing because um because I don't know it just seems like I should <laughs> and it's weird how heavy the thing feels I wonder if they could have already somehow managed to sneak into this thing and the reason I'm feeling some extra weight here is that perhaps I don't know perhaps there are worms inside of it or maybe it's just gathered some moisture content to it and sucked it into the shell and is the reason I'm feeling some weight is maybe it's just a little bit more damp now than it was when I first placed it into the bin. 
Here's uh, here's one of these unusual corn cob spheres, which are now a week away from hitting 100 days of age. Last time I think we bumped into maybe a couple of them, two or three of them. And then there was one that we deliberately broke into pieces too. So that avocado pit doesn't feel like it wants to give quite yet. It's a slightly larger one. Here's another half of an avocado with worms enjoying the inside of it. Here's another pit. So I do have a good number of, I think there was like maybe five of them in here. I was surprised to keep picking one after the other out of here. Out of here. <laughs> oh, another avocado pit. Oh, another one. And these are little bits of leftover um, something. I'm assuming it's Brussels sprout. Maybe the very end of the Brussels sprout where, for whatever reason, the thing just keeps trying to grow. That's more avocado shell. Oh, this one actually looks like it wasn't me that cracked it away, but the worms seem to have made their way into the thing and caused a, a fissure on the side of the thing, which is kind of interesting. I did try giving a couple of those things a good squeeze to see if I could break them. Here's another another sphere of corn cob. So there's two pieces of that stuff right there. And we might even bump into little fragments of the one that we decided to break once it was soft enough to allow itself to break. And we might not see a whole lot of anything else. Here's the stem of a banana. And they're going to be getting a little bit more of that today. So why don't we proceed with giving them their feeding. I believe we've probably opened up a large enough space down here into which we can drop today's feeding. And we're going to sort of follow suit with what we did last time, which was to um, give them only a very simple, lightweight bedding. This stuff is what was getting piled into both sides of the bin for some time. It was put in dry just my shredded paper cardboard mix. The stuff was put in dry in the hopes that it would absorb some moisture from the surrounding materials and help sort of just bring the overall moisture content of the bin down a bit. And it seems like it helped a lot because everything seems pretty smooth flowing and loose in here, which is kind of cool. It's the way I like to see it. So I think we've got enough room in here. Now I've got, like I said earlier, coffee which means we've got a new replacement coffee filter. So why don't we give them the old one? The old one can go in as supplementary bedding along with today's feeding. And then when I give bread, I feel like maybe we should start with the bread so we can really ensure that we're dampening it thoroughly. So if I put in bread and I don't take the time to first moisten the stuff, I come back and the thing's covered in mold and it, it's hard as a, a rock and it just feels like it has gone nowhere. This is fairly dense bread. So it does feel like I gotta apply a good bit of moisture to this stuff to make sure it's got a good dampness and then it's very likely that the worms will work on it for me as opposed to it just sitting in here idle and being ignored by the worms. And again, like we did last time, we're going to uh, utilize the old feeding zone indicator that had been resting out here on top as supplementary bedding to go in with today's feeding. And then the new diagram that we were referring to, which has all the current latest information on it, that'll end up becoming our top covering and so on and so forth. We'll just keep on coming back with uh, we'll keep coming back with a fresh one every time we check in. I mean, I even thought about maybe not printing out a fresh one today, but it is always kind of fun to see all the actual, you know, actively updated, most current information showing right down to the day how old certain objects are. So I think I'll probably just keep to the routine of always giving them a fresh one. So, bread underneath the paper, banana peel and coffee on top, and then a little something I like to do with my coffee sometimes is to dress it up with some of my worm chow. And another thing that I'm not sure if I've been giving regularly is grit, so let's make sure we give them some grit too. That was a pretty generous helping, but 
for some reason, I don't know why, but it seems to me like maybe we haven't really been giving them too much grit. So I want to make sure we're catching up on what appears to, or what I'm thinking might have been neglected a little bit over time. So maybe we'll uh, try to pay closer attention to make sure we give these little guys grit on a regular basis too. So we kind of buried some of the things that were excavated from this feeding zone. So let's see if we can round them all up and get them back down into the line of fire where they belong. Here's another one of those corn cob spheres. I believe that's what this is, right? Or is it something else? I'm not sure. I'm not going to chip away at it. I'm going to leave it be. For some reason it seemed like it might have been one of those corn cob spheres, but it just didn't seem like it was the right shape. Oh, here's another. This might have been one of the um, avocado pits that I came very close to breaking last time, but it didn't want to give. So maybe we'll help this little guy along by busting it up and making it a little bit more available to the worms by being fragmented into a smaller particle size. And now we can backfill and cover up and be done with the check-in. So that was another fun visit with the mixed red worms. You might have saw as I pulled up the label from the side, the way I labeled it is not mixed red worms, but it actually spells out the, the names of the types of worms that occupy my mixed red worm bin. It's red wigglers, Indian blue worms, and European night crawlers. That's what's commonly known as like that red worm mix that a lot of people run. And it's a nice mix. It's a fun batch of worms. They do a great job. And I'm glad I've got them. So let's get these suckers covered up and put them back on the shelf and leave them be. We've interfered with their hard work here enough for a day. So let's uh, leave it at that. I got a few things to take care of getting cleaned up and put away. But I'm not going to waste your time with that. That's boring. Before I go really quick, let me just say thank you. Thank you so much for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. If you did, as always, please don't forget to leave me a quick thumbs up before you go. That's always really appreciated. And if you haven't done so already, please also consider subscribing to the channel. That's very much appreciated as well. All right, everyone. Have a great day. Thanks for watching. Bye now.